And on the ninth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker, so God made an engineer. God said, I need someone willing to wake up to face the impossible, to make a figment of the imagination at dawn, and breathe life into it by dusk. Someone with the curiosity of a child and the stubborn guile of a sage. So God made an engineer. God said, I need someone to model the materials they do not wholly understand into shapes we cannot precisely analyze, to withstand forces we cannot properly assess. Someone that can dream further than the eye can see is willing to pull up their sleeves and fail and fail and fail again then to get up the next morning and try again. Someone that runs towards the fire. I need someone to build the bridge and mend the fridge. Design cars for speed, but protect us when in need. Someone that can launch a giant rocket towards the moon and have its astronaut safely home by noon. Someone that can measure the pulse of the butterfly's motions and track the ghost cream galloping across the oceans. So God made an engineer. God said, I need someone with the intelligence to harness the power of light, but not be blinded by it. Someone that can see the okay way is not the right way. Someone that can make a front divine virtue from their knowledge and use it to serve the humanity, and not to glorify their own vanity. It had to be someone who strived to tinker and to stand out from the crowd. Someone who is curious, determined, obstinate, and proud. Someone to measure, to test, to try and to fail, to hypothesize, invest, collaborate, and travail. Someone willing to teach and seek diverse minds and opinions bold enough to tackle unsolved problems and humble enough to listen to each voice around the table. Someone that could find and teach the team together with a soft but strong bonds of sharing good laughter and then sigh and then reply with smiling eyes when his son or daughter says they want to spend their life doing what mom and dad do. So God made an engineer.